Hello students, this video is going to walk you through the steps of applying vertical and balance tolerances while inspecting a pair of glasses. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is talk about what we have here. We've got our prescription, so we are verifying. We've got a schematic drawing of a pair of glasses and we've got two lensometer targets here. These glasses and the targets correlate directly down to one another so that you'll be able to see what's happening in the lensometer and see a schematic of what's happening on the glasses. One of the stipulations is that once we line up the one lens and then we go to center the other one, we cannot move the frame table. And that's how we're going to be able to know that we have vertical imbalance amount. So first things first, let's reference our instruction list. In the instructions here, we see that the very first thing that we do is center the strongest lens in the 90th meridian. And that is because when we actually apply the prism and measure the amount of prism in the glasses, we're going to measure that in the weaker of the two lenses. So let's start with that first. So looking at this prescription right here, we want to center the strongest lens in the 90th meridian. On a quick glance, not really paying attention to much, looking at these two spheres, you might be inclined to think that this left eye is the stronger of the two lenses and go ahead and center it first. But that would be incorrect because this prescription is actually at 180. So the amount is actually equal to both the sphere and the cylinder 90 degrees away at the 90th meridian. So at 90, and, or for both of these powers, we get a minus five for the right eye. And then for the left eye, we're adding both the minus 175 minus one, and that gives us a minus 475 for the power. And now when we see, we see that the right eye is actually the stronger at minus five. So we're going to center it first. So first we'll center this one. And when we look into the lensometer, we're going to be attempting to center this one perfectly. We're going to locate the optical center. We're going to be able to move the frame table up and down, move the lens back and forth, and center this optical center. Then we're going to spot it. So we're going to spot that location that's the optical center. And schematically, if you think about it, this is a minus lens. So what we have is the optical center is falling right on the patient's pupil. Now, let's look again at our instructions here. Now we're going to center the other lens and display only a vertical prism. So now we're going to move over to this other lens. And one thing we cannot do is move this frame table. So the thing that we're going to expect for vertical imbalance is that when we reposition the lens, we, we are allowed to move it right or left, but we're not allowed to move the frame table, which is what's going to allow us to move the lens up or down. So if we can't move that frame table, all we can do is move the lens right to left. We're going to get it so that all the prism is in the vertical meridian in the 90 and then set it right there. This could be where it's at right now at one diopter base up. It could be at a half of a diopter. It could be a third. It could be a quarter. It could be down. So wherever it is, without moving the frame table, you're going to center it. And then you're going to read the amount of prism. So in this pair, how much prism are we looking at? Remember that this first circle is a half of a diopter and that this second circle is one diopter. The diagram only shows a small amount because vertical imbalance amounts are generally a smaller amount. That's why I've zoomed in on it. So reading how much prism we have here, we are at right at one diopter of base up prism. And we're gonna spot that location and that's gonna be right on the same horizontal plane as the right eye. The patient is actually experiencing one diopter of base up right there they are not on the optical center. 
the optical center is not aligned in the target. And so what they're experiencing when they're looking through one diopter base up prism in particular. If this left eye is a minus one's lens, so schematically what's happening is we're experiencing base up prism in a minus lens, which is gonna end up looking like this. So you can see that where the patient's eye is actually looking out of, base up prism. And so the optical center location is actually down from that. They're not right on the optical center. So now, once we know that we have one diopter base up prism, we're gonna apply that to ANSI. And ANSI allows us how much? 0.33 diopters in any direction. But I have one diopter base up prism that's going to fail. So that doesn't pass. But we still have one more area of tolerance that ANSI allows us. Now, if you look back at the instructions, we read the amount of prism as one diopter base up and we spotted that location. That's where the eye is looking right here. Then we applied the third of a diopter of prism, that 0.33, and we decided whether it passed or failed. And in this case, you remember, it failed. If you look at the instructions here, if it passes, we keep moving forward, no problems. But if it fails, we're gonna have to continue to apply the ANSI tolerances to see if it passes the next tolerance, which is one millimeter. So how do we apply that? We're going to actually now move the frame table and allow us to position the target at the optical center and spot it. And what that looks like in the frame is that we'll move the lens in whatever direction it needs to go so that we can get the prism and spot the optical center. But schematically, this is what we'll have. We'll have another part spotted on that lens. Now, once we've done that, we wanna apply that millimeter tolerance. And how would we do that? In the real world, if you had a pair of glasses in front of you and you had a lensometer, you'd have a frame that had two sets of spots and you'd measure the distance between those two spots. That's what you need to do. But in here, on a video, we can't do that, as well as on tests and exam, national exams, you can't do that on there. So what we'll actually use is a formula to figure that out, Prentice rule. Now normally, Prentice rule, we're solving for the prism. But we actually have that, we know how much prism was being experienced in the lens. And we know what power the lens has, so we can use those two variables in the Prentice Rule formula. Whenever you need to change Prentice Rule formula up and solve for a different variable, you ask yourself which variable are you solving for? And then you're gonna divide, and it's always gonna be P times 10 divided by what I have will give me what I want. And so now we just kind of plug in those values. We had one diopter base up prism. We're gonna multiply prism times 10, divided by the power of the lens, which was 475. So now we have 2.1 millimeters of distance. And remember that we're solving for the distance. So this isn't 2.1 prism. We know how much prism we have in here we're solving for the millimeter distance. So if we were able to measure this pair in real life, then this distance between this prism point that they're looking through and the optical center is gonna equal out to about, a mil about two millimeters. And so now we finish applying ANSI to that. And if ANSI allows us one millimeter of tolerance, but we have about two millimeters, that goes over and so this fails the millimeter tolerance as well. Since both tests failed, the prism amount and the millimeter amount, this lens is ultimately not gonna work and it will fail. Now I wanna look at some different possible outcomes from the testing and whether the pair will ultimately pass or fail. It has to fail both the prism test and the millimeter test. And this situation is very much like the previous example. Because we have a fail from the prism test and fail on the millimeter test, this pair will ultimately fail. If on another pair, we failed the prism test, but we passed the millimeter test 
then this pair would ultimately pass. If the prism test is passed, but the millimeter test fails, then this pair still will ultimately pass. As if the pair passes the prism test and the millimeter test, of course it passes. So the only time that the pair will fail is if both prism test and millimeter test fail. All right, I hope this helps and thanks for watching.